Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the Eastern WF, then we'll have a look at the GFS ensembles, the UK Met Office weather warnings as we do with the wind warning in force and we'll have a look at the UK Met Office shorter range uh, forecast with uh, the precipitation, temperature and wind gusts as well. Now it's going to be looking very interesting over the next few weeks. We're looking at yesterday's video, the potential for seeing some bitterly cold easterly winds throughout the last 10 days of uh, December. And that scenario is still on. From the way I'm looking at it now, there are two scenarios for the last 10 days of December. Um, and that includes the Christmas period, of course. And both are reasonably cold. It's either looking like we're going to be having high pressure dominates with cold, frosty, seasonable feel with temperatures around or below average. And plenty of you know overnight frost as well with that. Or another scenario at this stage is we do go bitterly cold in from the east with cold and snowy as you'll see with the models today there is a split and of course on the ensemble members we are seeing some brutally cold runs some tracking on similar scale to the beast from the east back in february and march 2018 i doubt it will come off like that however we are seeing some of these outlier runs so we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens with that so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you now run through the latest GFS, you can see we actually have southwesterly winds in the moment. That's really quite a mild day, um, 14, 15 degrees. But that looks like it's going to be the highest temperature we see for a number of weeks. It does look like temperatures will quickly dip down blow double digits once again over the next sort of three or four days. You can see that small system moving up the northwest part uh, of Northern Ireland and Scotland, and we do have a wind warning in force for the northwest of Scotland. Could be 70, 80 or 90 mile per hour gusts, but most of those gusts will be staying offshore. Now beyond that, we stay generally westerly through early next week, through Monday, Tuesday, and high pressure is starting to build in from the south. Now, if we do have a look at the 850 HP temperatures, it does look reasonably mild, and it may start mild initially. However, by midweek, once, that's, once that low is centred over um, the British Isles, we'll start to get an inversion, where the surface temperatures are much colder than the uh, upper air temperatures. So even though upper air temperatures look reasonably mild towards the surface, most likely 6 or 7 degrees in the day, and freezing or 1 degree at night. Now, beyond that is where we've got to keep an eye on what happens. It looks fairly certain that the high pressure won't be shifting for about a week um, from today. But it's by next weekend where the uncertainty starts to build. Where does this high pressure go? Now, you can see on this latest GFS run, the 12Z, that high pressure is trying to get towards Svalbard, towards Greenland, and that would inevitably push it into Scandinavia. Now, on this latest GFS, it gets going... But not all the way. And if you look at the upper air temperatures, bitterly cold air is just to our east. However, if we do run it through, we continue under that inversion. And then as we head towards the Christmas week, that high pressure is still very strong. That's why I say there's a two scenarios here. Because high pressure does not look like it's going to be breaking down anytime soon. That high pressure eventually gets its way, gets towards Scandinavia. And we are going in with bitterly cold air in from the east for um, probably starting on Boxing Day into the 27th in ready for the last few days of the year. The minus 10 line spreading through most of England. Now, we are generally under high pressure, so it won't be a massively snowy scenario. But once again, you shift that high pressure slightly with a bit more of a uh, easterly flow and we'll see much, much cold conditions. And you can see... We are bitterly cold for the end of December. So as I said, two scenarios here. Uh, and you can see the GFS actually plays out both of these scenarios with the high pressure sitting, giving us cold, frosty conditions. And then eventually it goes really cold in from the east. Now, if we do backtrack it, you can see that brittly cold air mass just to our east. Eventually spinning through the coldest air actually goes into France, the Alps down into Spain as well. Um, However, we are on the periphery of that, and most of England and Wales gets into that bitterly cold air, and we go really quite frigid, being the end of December, with um, really low amounts of UV um, in the day, and 
um, days only lasting eight, eight and a half hours in terms of sunlight, we would be seeing very low temperatures. And even if there isn't that much snow around with this, temperatures in the day would not be getting above freezing if we saw this scenario. So bitterly cold from the HGFS right towards the end of the run, of course, but we have seen this consistently over the last few days within some of the GFS runs of much colder conditions around uh, the Christmas period or slightly after. As I said, Two scenarios here, that high pressure sits over the UK, giving us frosty, frost, uh, frosty uh, conditions, and then the other scenario of bitterly cold easterly winds. Now, the most, like, most likely scenario is actually we see both. But the time frame for that is very uncertain. Of course, if the easterly winds keep delaying, eventually the atmosphere will not be primed for it, and it will remove itself from the models. So we'll have to see really what happens, but at this stage, a very good chance we stay really quite cold for the last 10 days of December. Whether it's just cold and frosty or cold and snowy, that is what we've got to decipher over the next week or so. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, now it's the 12Z, and we'll see how that does compare. Again, you can see uh, low pressure pushing into the far northwest, and we'd say generally High pressure dominated, of course, through next week. And that high pressure really tries to get going towards Greenland. And as we head towards day 10, you can see we have that really quite cold, that bitterly cold air mass towards Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. And as we head right towards day 10, you can see it is slowly shifting itself westwards. We're so close to going into bitterly cold air. But, of course, that high pressure hasn't fully got going yet. Now, one interesting sign is we do have a look at the north and hemisphere look is we have high pressure towards parts of scandinavia uh, it's not scandinavia um towards parts of siberia and parts of northern russia now if this big block we have over the uk connects with that it is highly likely this big lobe of low pressure bitterly cold air heads towards western europe it only has one place to go and that is southwards and westwards towards the uk so the GM run is poised to go cold, but in its 7 to 10 day time frame, it is looking cold and frosty with the potential for something a bit colder afterwards. So as you can see, these two models both showing very similar scenarios up until day 10. It's beyond that into the, the Christmas period is where the uncertainty comes in. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how it does compare again. This is the, uh, sorry, the, mid the midnight run. Uh, the 12Z hasn't come out yet, but you can see again, high pressure, very similar over to the other models. Build again. And then it tries, once again, to get up to our north. And you can see, bitterly cold air is just to our east, once again, with the very cold air mass. Yeah, again, once again, towards Scandinavia and parts of Siberia, bitterly cold air, trying to move in. And again, if we have a look at the Northern Hemisphere outlook, uh, and go to the pressure charts, you can again see high pressure towards Svalbard. And once again, it's highly likely that this high pressure gets going further northwards and eastwards, and we do start pulling in easterly winds. Now, I must say, this is all, again, 10-day time frame and beyond, so it is subject to change. The only reason why I'm reasonably confident with this is that we're seeing it on the majority of operational runs at the moment. All of the models towards the day 10 plus time frame are going for it, so there's very strong signals within the atmosphere we're going to be seeing this pattern. But also the ensemble members are starting to catch on as well. Again, the atmosphere does look like it's primed for this big block, but it's where it goes. And that's what, what we've got to keep an eye on. It could continually delay this. There is a fair chance that we don't see anything much colder until the last couple of days of December into the start of January. But at least it's encouraging at this stage. We are seeing these uh, potential very cold um, runs starting to appear. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS Ensemble, see how that does compare again. You can see, actually really quite mild over the next week, as I said. We upper our temperatures, it's really warm, and minimal precipitation really in the south with high pressure building in in a couple days' time. Now, of course, there's likely to be an inversion around, so temperatures are going to be much lower than, than they would sort of seem with these upper air temperatures. But towards the 20th of December, 21st, 22nd, that's when... The cold, the really cold runs start to appear. You can see probably about a half of the ensemble members now have at some point the minus 5 to minus 10 moving in. So that's bitterly cold air mass, cold enough to give widespread temperatures in the low single digits, if not to freezing for day, daytime highs, and cold enough to give snow as well. And you can even see, as I said, some runs right at the end going for a beast from the east type pattern, getting down to minus 10 to minus 15 degrees at 50 HPA. Now, beast from the east, we got down to about minus 17 and minus 18, but 
very similar air mass um, and being end of December it's likely to be as cold because of the amount of radiation from the sun being very low lower than it would be in February or March and of course um, we have much shorter days than we do in February or March as well so even if the air mass isn't quite cold as end of February early March it's still likely if we did see that scenario and I specifically say if we did see that scenario come off we would be seeing very, very cold conditions. So you can see right towards the end of the run, a lot of ensemble members are going cold. And if we do have a look at the dew points, actually go to the picture, you can see from around the 20th to 22nd, the dew point is around freezing for average, if not quite far below. And again, that's symbolic of a really quite cold continental air mass, very dry continental air mass that would... Of course, if we did see an easterly wind start up a lot of convection along the North Sea. If we do have a look at the two meter temperatures and precipitation, you can see just a downward trend in the two meter temperatures. As you can see, over the next day or two, we could be seeing temperatures still around double digits, but slowly dropping off, probably a degree every single day. And by the time we get to around the 20th, 21st, 22nd of December, temperatures around four or five degrees, and potentially even down to sort of three, four degrees for averages now around the Christmas period. So as I said, with the two scenarios, it's looking pretty cold for Christmas. But whether it's cold and frosty, like we have had over the last few years, we've had, had some cold and frosty Christmases, or whether it's going to be snowy, that is the question. At this stage, I probably would favour that the actual Christmas day it's just going to be cold and frosty. I do suspect um, that if we do see the bitterly cold air in from the east, it will likely be in the last five days of December, so 27th, maybe 26th, 27th, 28th of December. But you never know. We'll have to keep an eye on what the models show up over the next few days. Definitely think we'll have a very good idea if we are going to see these bitterly cold easterly winds at some point in the next few weeks. We'll have a very good idea over the next three or four days. Because if these it's easterly, uh, easterly winds start to come into the 10-day time frame, then we potentially really are flirting um, with it. This stage over is staying between the te uh, day 10 to day 14 time frame. Um, so, it, of course, it can continually be pushed back or we could just see it not come off at all. But looking at the pattern and what the models are going, I do suspect we will see something in from the east. Whether it's bitterly cold or whether it's just a slack easterly flow, we've got to see what happens with that. Now, if we do have a look at the weather warnings, as we do actually have yellow warning in force. You can see at the moment, we do have a yellow warning uh, in force from tonight, 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. tomorrow for very strong winds. Now, it hasn't been updated since yesterday, so I'll briefly run through it as I did look at it in more detail yesterday. 80 to 85 miles per hour wind, uh, miles per hour gusts, potentially 90 miles per hour in a few spots. And again, the very strongest winds will remain just offshore. So that's why it's only a yellow warning. Um, high impact, decent likelihood as well. Now, we also have that yellow warning, of course, until 6 a.m. tomorrow. But then we have another wind warning as that low moves up the northwest coast. Very windy again, potentially 80 to 85 or 90 miles per hour. And again, same on the impact matrix. So if you are out in the north of Scotland or the northwest of Scotland, do make sure um, you do take the necessary precautions as there could be some very strong gusts. Of course, as I said, most of these very strong gusts are likely to stay offshore, but I can't rule out something maybe of 80 or 90 miles per hour for a period of time. It does look like it will move through quite quickly, so hopefully it doesn't cause too much disruption. So we now have a look at the UK Met Office run, see what that is showing over the next five days. You can see currently we have that big low pressure system just out to the west, bringing heavy rain overnight tonight to parts of north of Scotland. And its associated weather fronts will bring some patchier rain potentially through tomorrow um, or tonight into tomorrow through many areas in the west. That low will move through very quickly and we'll have a rash of showers in behind it. And it does look like we'll see... A bit of a frontal wave in the south where we see sort of a stagnant weather front moving diagonally into the UK. And we're just going to be seeing a lot of rain moving along that tomorrow afternoon. So quite a bit of rain could be falling potentially in the northwest, parts of northern England and the north midlands as well. Now beyond that again, we see more low pressure in the north. But you can see in the south looking really quite dry as high pressure is building in. And you can see by Thursday, Friday, all are dry, not a real, not a shower in sight as we go much much drier still will be cloud around at times but we should see plenty of dry spells if we do actually have a wind at, at the wind gusts briefly you can see not as quite as severe as we were seeing potentially yesterday in terms of this low pressure system but still 70 80 mile per hour um gusts and again maybe in land 50 or 60 miles per hour 
Uh, and again, we've had some disruption over the last few weeks from, of course, Storm Ar uh, Arwen and Storm Bara, and specifically Storm um, um, Arwen in the north. So if there are some um, structures or trees that are a bit weakened, there could potentially be some disruption. But you can see that the load really deepens as it spreads northwards, and you can see 100 miles per hour winds. Um, so it does look like it's deepening a bit later than was forecasted yesterday. Again, tomorrow nothing too major um and we could see some more strong winds in from the north but as we head right towards the end of the run you can see very light winds symbolic symbolic of uh, high pressure dominating now tonight again temperatures in double digits not looking too bad indeed so the north maybe a little bit more frosty um and tomorrow afternoon again 10 11 degrees in the south but much colder in the north it could be an overnight frost once again as we have a cold air mass moving in by Tuesday afternoon, maybe 11 or 12 in the far south, but majority of areas back into single digits. And overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, once again, still could be uh, reasonably mild in the south. Wednesday highs, maybe 11 or 12 once again. But by Thursday afternoon, you can see temperatures slowly dropping as that inversion starts to take place. By Friday, early morning, we could be seeing a frost in the north, even though the upper air temperatures aren't that cold. And again, in the day, only 7, 8 degrees. Uh, and of course, as I said, um, those temperatures will be slowly dropping as the inversion takes hold. And as we saw in the ensembles, those temperatures will be slowly dropping over the next week to 10 days um, towards Christmas. Um, and of course, what happens with Christmas is still up in the air. But it's looking quite exciting potentially we're going on the cusp of something quite cold for the christmas period i definitely think it's the highest potential we've had in many many years got a lot of uh, long-term um, climate drivers going for us the only thing not going for us would be the tropospheric uh, sorry the polar vortex in the stratosphere which could combine with the po uh, polar vortex and the tropospheric polar vortex but we're not seeing that in the runs uh, at this stage we saw a lot of westerly conditions over the last few weeks but it looks like there still is a bit of a disconnect appear. We thought it had connected a couple of weeks ago, but it looks like it's disconnected once again, the stratosphere and the troposphere. So it doesn't look like a very strong polar vortex will be impacting us too much, as it is quite strong at the moment. Um, so all things are pointing towards a blocked and potentially much colder pattern. So we'll have to keep, keep an eye on what happens over the next few weeks, but if you are a cold lo uh, weather lover and you want to see potentially some snow around the Christmas period, or at least some colder conditions, a more seasonable uh, Christmas, Keep your fingers crossed, because um, it is looking encouraging, I must say. It is looking encouraging. Not guaranteed at all to be seeing anything cold or snowy. It's definitely looking cold, but again, we'll have to see uh, really what how it does evolve over the next week or so. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.